on the on the ethics on the on, on the talk that you gave last last year at the Melbourne Fair, okay, you said quite a lot about China and about the the new economies, okay, on the on the numbers you just didn't see it as, as sustainable given the, if they just scaled up the lifestyle based on the West, but right? It, it seemed to me that you you were asking quite a lot. You were asking them to develop on a, a different ethics basis. Well, absolutely, absolutely, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and I mean, in terms of sustainability in the in the in the strong sense, um, uh, if every Chinese family has a car and a refrigerator, and um, particularly it's not a fashion style of um, refrigerator with whatever they are, the gases that destroy the ozone there, uh, then we're done for. Um, um, I went to a evolutionary psychology seminar at London Business School a while ago, some there from marketing, and they believe that the number of basic human urges that marketing addresses, one of which they call conspicuous greed, we know just conspicuous consumption, buying stuff not for um, its use to us in terms of food and shelter and the like, but more the state flow of the big car, because you, it makes you look good rather than you actually need it. Um, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, others, um, which would include sex, whatever you think of it, um, uh, it's nearly so damaged the environment. So, you know, if conspicuous consumption stroke grief takes off, we're done for. But if some of the other less um, physical resource consuming motives take off, then there's a, there's a better chance. I'm sure in China and to a lesser extent India, there's quite a lot of cheap labour in the hinterland to go out or keep us going for a number of years. But already, um, when I mentioned sort of Singapore jumped over the cheap labour stage, and certainly um, India and China, Mumbai and um, Guangzhou, is it? In, 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 in the other kind of the industrialisation centres. Mm. Uh, they might get into trouble on the ethical front through exploiting cheap and en- cheap cheap labour at the front end. Um, you know, Organisations like Nike and John try and control it, but with mixed success, it can seem uh, um, on an everyday basis. Um, and, that, and I think, I mean, I think, um, I think it's true that in China there's more tarmac roads than would, would enough to cover the whole of the UK. In tarmac, it's just the scale of the place, and I've got, I've got a slide which I sometimes show of the biggest traffic jam in the world, which is all set right the 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 one the four or five miles long, yes. and it's not in Los Angeles, which you might think is the most likely candidate. Somewhere in China, I don't actually know where, um, but it, it makes you think. But well, the it's largely on the, and of course they they would say, um, well, you know, the West is been, you know, producing carbon dioxide and the other naughty things for decades and more, so it's our turn, thank you very much. Um, and they may, I mean, Michael Porter, who's kind of a great sort of free market economist, a la Adam Smith, says, well, you know, free market will take care of this. In fact, there's an opportunity here for the West to, do, to develop, say, the technology that um, captures the carbon dioxide from coal and pumps it back down into the holes under the ground. Why it will stay, and if we can develop that technology, we can sell it to China and wherever. But um, will will they bother? And they probably won't bother until it kind of is, is in their face. So just as in London, centuries ago, uh, uh, Basil Dio built the sewage, the sewage system uh, only because um, the House of Commons became uninhabitable due to the smell from the Thames. But now we have, well, we've had smog in Singapore, haven't we, recently? And, yes. the, um, and I think in Beijing, um, air pollution is fairly frightening. And a lot of Chinese people go around wearing masks these days, you notice. Yes. Even when they come over here. Yes, but I. But it'll take that kind of thing. There's no obvious solution to it. I just wonder how you could talk about it without thinking something changes in, in the West as well. Um, well, indeed, yeah. I mean, I think um, evolutionary processes may take take care of it. Uh, depends whether you believe in sort of tipping points or not. 
Well, I think, you know, um, in terms of climate change, almost certainly, yes. Uh, human agency in causing it, more than likely. Um, do we know what to do about it? Possibly, and we might be able to prevent it. But are we past the tip tipping point, you know, point of no return? In which case, we're done for. That's certain, I, I hope not. But if, if we're not, then there's time for evolutionary processes and free markets are like water to take, take care of it. That's so that's the case. But virtualization obviously helps in terms of that theme because, um, you know, a teleconference or a Skype or whatever, you know, I mean, obviously some servers somewhere burning energy, but that's going to be a very small fraction of all the air, air fares and air fuel and stuff that it takes to um, convene a face-to-face -face meeting on a kind of global corporate scale.